Welcome to this virtual service at Macomb Wesley United Methodist Church. We ask you to gather some bread and juice to prepare for a time of Holy Communion. We do hope you've had a marvelous Christmas celebration in spite of all the complexities and challenges. If the Church of Jesus is alive, the sign of his presence is not our wonderful sanctuary. It's not in whether we gather a number of people or whether we are incapable of gathering. The sign of his presence is the spirit and truth of Christ. The sign of his presence is the evidence of Christ within. The Apostle Paul talks about it in Galatians 5. He says the evidence is the fruit of the spirit. It is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In this first service of the year 2021, we gather to renew our selves and our passion in his gifts, that we may deliver his mission to the people we serve. So we welcome you in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Please join me in the call to worship. The people who lived in shadows have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep gloom, on them light has come. For to us a child is born, to us a child is given. And the government will be upon this child's shoulder. And the child's name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Bringer of Peace. Please join me in the prayer. Star of Bethlehem, burst in upon us, awaken us with the brilliance of the Son of Righteousness, risen with healing in his wings, along with men and women of wisdom, we wonder at the, the, the infants in, entrusted to our world, and we wonder at the gifts we may bring. Deepen the value of this hour, shine in our hearts until the light of the Savior has illuminated and redeemed us and the world around us. Through Christ, the light. Amen. take a second to tell you how much I enjoyed the children's message from Christmas Eve. I really liked hearing what you thought what the best part of Christmas is. I loved hearing how you liked spending time with family. And I heard a few of you, and one being my grandson, say that one of the best parts was the gifts that you got, the presents. Well, I like presents too. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about Epiphany Sunday, because it is the time that we recognize when the wise men follow the star at Bethlehem to find baby Jesus. And they took baby Jesus' presents. Now, they took gifts fit for a king, 
they took things like frankincense, myrrh, and gold. And those were things that kings would receive at that time. It's not something that we would give a baby now, is it? But I started thinking, do we give Jesus gifts now? We celebrate his birthday on Christmas, but do you know we can still give him a gift? And he wants our gifts. Now we can't wrap them up and we're not going to follow a star and find him, but we can give a gift to Jesus every day. And at the beginning of this new year, I would like to challenge each of us, moms and dads and grandparents and the kiddos, to give a gift to Jesus each day. Now you might be thinking, well, what kind of gift can we give to Jesus? Well, we can give him our time and we can give him our talents. Now, how would we give Jesus our time? You certainly aren't going to wrap up time and put a bow on it, are you? But we can spend time reading about Jesus, learning about Jesus, listening to stories, Bible stories about Jesus, doing um, some Sunday school things, anything that, that teaches us more about Jesus. That's a present to him. That's a gift of our time. The other thing that I mentioned was our talents. Any time that you show kindness to someone or you provide a service for someone, you volunteer to do something, you're showing Jesus's love to other people. And that's giving him a present too. Those are the things that he wants us to do, not just once a year, but every day all through the year. So I ask you, what present are you going to give Jesus this year? Let's think about that and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to, Jesus to us. That is the greatest gift that you have given us. Help us to remember that we can give gifts to Jesus each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen.
Will you join me in a time of prayer? Almighty God, from the story of the Magi, we learn so much in the fact that you first announced your birth to dirty shepherds and pagan priests. From that, we learn that you are always reaching to the outcast. May we do so for others in Christ. In their appreciation for the wisdom of the stars, may we also look up and learn to wonder again. In the humility of the Magi, to bow to an infant in a feeding trough, may we recognize the the worth of those who seem powerless. In the commitment of the Magi to leave their best gifts to a family they'd never met, may we learn to give to the stranger. May we give new insights as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And so now, like the gifts of the Magi, we leave a gift to you, Christ. These tithes and these offerings, they represent our very best. May they be used to help transform others in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mary, gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and
Testament reading is coming to us from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 60, from verse 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and the thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Light up your eyes, and look around. They all gather together. They come to you, your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camel, camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epha, all those, who, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Hear this reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star, that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tis better, I think, to see one star shining in the sky than to view so many stars so bright in the dark so high. For with just one star to gaze upon, you never have to choose when there are too many to focus on, one star you will probably lose. Edwina Reiser's poem reminded me that Wednesday of this week is Epiphany. That's the traditional time when the ancient astrologers followed the star. Joseph Russell writes on the etymology of the word Epiphany. He says, rulers from their palace balcony would make an appearance 
an epiphany, to greet their subjects, to say, this is who I am, this is what I offer you, this is what I ask of you. So he says God in Jesus Christ has made an epiphany on the world's balcony. It begins with these words from Matthew's Gospel. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who's been born king of the Jews? We have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Last week, if you caught a break in the clouds, you had the opportunity to view a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. It had been 400 years since the two planets were that close in proximity. In our gospel reading, the writer four times identifies a star as the directing sign. Scholars are divided on the meteorological explanation. For some, it was the same conjunction of planets that we saw last week. Some stars are for viewing. Some stars are for wishing upon. Starlight, star bright, the first star I see tonight, I wish I may, I wish I might, get the wish I make tonight. Some stars are for viewing, some for wishing upon, and some to determine destiny. That was the purpose for the Magi. Their home was Persia, where they were recognized as philosophers, physicians, scientists, astrologers, wizards who interpreted dreams and dabbled in magic potions. So what are they doing in the Gospel of Matthew? Matthew is the book that everyone says is written for Jewish Christians. Yet here we find the first people to worship Jesus are not Jewish and certainly not Christian, but pagan idol worshipers from the wrong place, the wrong time, the wrong religion. But they were men of wisdom on a road to deeper insight. So what road are you on? And where is it going to take you? Is it taking you to ignorance or intelligence? Is it going to take you to oversight or insight? To apathy or to aspiration? Where's your road taking you? An eight-year-old described his father getting lost on the road to Christmas. He says, my dad just finished putting up all the Christmas lights. All over the house, all over the yard. Tree lights and Santa lights and reindeer lights. Dad says, we have more lights than anyone else. As soon as he gets the lights put up, he turns them on, he shows them off, he talks to people, he tells them how much he spends on the lights. It's a pretty important job, I guess. It's so important that he missed the Christmas program at church on last week so he could take care of the lights. I wish somebody could help my dad. But I don't think I'm going to have Christmas lights when I grow up. It's easy to get hung up on the glitter and the, and the lights. It's easy to miss out on the, the dreams and the angels and the stars. It's easy to go away from Christmas as though nothing significant just took place. The Magi were men of wisdom on the road to deeper insight. In the stars, they read a portrayal of yesterday and a glimpse of tomorrow. They had seen a conjunction of stars or planets, and there was a message for them. The message, a new king has been born. So after arriving in Jerusalem, they asked, where's the child who's been born king of the Jews? We have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Bishop Williman says, there are questions you ask in public and there are questions you keep to yourself. Everyone knew Herod was the only king and it was, it was treason to suggest there was another. Herod was insanely jealous and deceptive to protect his position. 
a despot, a, a tyrant will do whatever it takes to retain power, including the execution of several family members and the slaughter of innocent children. So disturbed by the Magi's question, he consults his priests who tell Herod that the scriptures of the place, the scriptures predict Bethlehem is the location. Again, the Magi continue to follow the light until it, it brings them to a rooming house where the Holy Family was staying. These Magi were men of wisdom on a road to deeper insight. And when they arrived, they found a sense of resolution. These are the words we read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning in verse 10. When they saw the star that it had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy and entering the house. They saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Wisely, respectfully, worshipfully, the Magi offered tokens of honor. Their 800-mile journey had been marked by questions like detours along the road, but now they had reached the apex of their destination. If they return by the same old road, then their story is filled with special effects, uh, glitter, glamour, glitz, but nothing changes. It's like finding the star in the heavens, but not finding the star from the heavens. That's what Bill Keane was getting at in his family circus cartoon. Dolly is setting out the nativity set, the stable is up, Mary and Joseph are in place, positioned, and you can see the other characters are still in their boxes. Dolly holds up the manger with the baby Jesus in it and says, here he is, the star of Bethlehem. The Magi were men of wisdom on a road to deeper insight. And when they arrived, they found a sense of resolution. And when they departed, they followed another road. If you allow the starlight to get inside you, if you are overwhelmed by the joy, if you're able to hear the voices of angels, then where does the road lead you? Certainly not to the same old patterns. Howard Thurman was the African-American preacher, teacher, philosopher, poet in the early 20th century. He was raised by a grandmother who'd formerly been a slave and had found freedom. Thurman saw in Jesus the peaceful resolution to the problem of civil rights, the end of segregation, the beginning of justice for all people. And those were the principles that he then passed on to Martin Luther King Jr. Like other wise men and wise women, Thurman expresses a call to go home by a new road, another way. Because Christmas changes everything. In his book, The Mood of Christmas, Thurman writes, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. That is going home by another road. So Pastor Melly is going to lead us in Holy Communion. May you taste God's wisdom. May you hear God's grace. May you see 
God's glory. And may you, may you find a road of transformation in these words. Please join me in the service of communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or oh, you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed, breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through, our pro through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our, save, our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses, in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciple and said, take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciple, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the people until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Congregations of Wesleyans and United Methodists renew their covenant with God. John Wesley adapted a prayer from the Puritan tradition that was important to his parents, Samuel and Susanna, and life in the Epworth Rectory. It informed his theology and preaching. He expected the people called Methodists to pray this prayer at the beginning of each new year as a way of remembering and renewing their baptismal covenant. So join me on this first Sunday of 2021 as we close with this Wesleyan covenant prayer as our benediction together. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing Put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O oh, wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine, and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. So now, friends, I go from this time of worship with God's healing grace and peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>